What's up, guys? So today on Monk Mode, I want to take you on a journey uh, with me over the next um, week. Um, and then hopefully over the next months, um, we'll, 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 I'll check in with you and tell you what I've learned and so on and so forth. Um, the journey is going to um, encompass a three-day fast, um, uh, experimenting with intermittent fasting, coming off my three-day fast, um, and also choosing the carnivore diet as my diet of choice. Um, and I want to see if I can maintain that intermittent fasting plus carnivore with my boxing training, which is typically pretty tough. Um, from what I've heard, and um, maybe impossible, but we're going to try. Um, and then at some point during, once I've resumed training and um, conquered the, the carnivore diet and I feel comfortable on it, um, I also want to try a seven-day fast um, and see how that goes and see what the understand the benefits of that. Um, but anyway, long story short, over two months ago, I incurred a shoulder injury. Um, I stopped training um, because I needed to let it heal. Um, got off on my diet, um, got off on my routine, my sleeping, started drinking coffee again. And to be honest, I just feel horrible. Um, achy, joints are achy. My skin is bad um, on my face, my whole body. Um, my energy is bad. My sleep is bad. Um, I can go on and on, but I, I just feel miserable um, and um, need things like coffee and sugar throughout the day just to keep going. And so I want to see if I can switch up my metabolism Um and, and enjoy some of the benefits from a fast um, and hope you get a chance to learn uh, something along the way. So let's check it out. We're going to start by this, uh, start with this video from uh, Dr. Sung. It seems to have gotten a lot of traction on YouTube. So uh, my hope is it, that it's reputable. He looks legit. Um, and we'll start by understanding the benefits of a three day fast. Welcome back. This is Dr. Jim Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about the three-day water fast. Clean the brain, reset your energy. Let's get into some of the benefits and what happens during the three days. Let's get right into it. Benefits. Improves immune function, repairs damage to cells, removes dysfunctional cells and pathogens, reduces neural inflammation or basically things like prime glial cells, Increase autophagy, breaks down cells and other pathogens in our system, decreases autoimmune disease, benefits gut flora or resets the gut flora, and increases DNA repair. Okay, so there's a lot of benefits to a three-day fast. All right, right away, I don't know what a lot of these words mean, um, but some of it is, uh, some, of, some of the words are things I've heard. I have heard that th fasting for three days can help you... Um, improve your, uh, your, your body's response to insulin. Um, I have not heard that it can repair DNA. I have heard that it can help with autoimmune diseases. Um, and I've heard that it's a great way. Um, and maybe that's what he's talking about to get your body to go through and essentially eat dead cells. Um, that could be, that could potentially be, um, cancerous, um, because your body needs energy. And, uh, someone told me that if you fast after about two days, I think it is, your body starts searching for dead cells that once again could turn into cancer cells and it eats those for energy, which is a great way to minimize your risk of cancer. I don't know if that's true, but maybe he'll talk about that. We'll see. Now, if you want to do the three-day fast, I would suggest consulting a physician, especially if you have insulin-dependent diabetics, right? Because if you go on a fast and you continue to take your insulin, it's going to be problematic. People who are menstruating, I suggest not doing a three-day fast during menstruation because it could really deplete you. Hypoglycemics, people who go without eating, get shaky, irritable, um, angry, right? Those are the people who do not want to do a three-day fast immediately. They need to get into more of a keto-adaptive state uh, before going on a three-day fast. People who are on a lot of different medications because medications uh, can change or dosages can change uh, related to how much you're eating and uh, depletion of energy. So just make sure if you have any of these conditions, please consult your physician before going ahead and doing a three-day fast. A uh, quick note on there, um, on, on that point. Number one, I'm not giving any sort of uh, dietary advice or medical advice or anything like that. I'm just sharing what I'm doing and what I'm learning. Um, I will tell you that uh, I have fasted before, um, and the first day is the hardest. I do remember that. Um, and um, But uh, I also have noticed that I think 
I handle a fast a little bit better than I've heard from some of my friends. So I'm comfortable doing it. So just make sure if you start fasting, I, I can tell you if you feel lightheaded or anything, anything like that, um, consider stopping. And then number two, make sure you consult a doctor before you do it. And also can maybe at a bare minimum consult this video. Um, but make sure you consider all the, um, the potential um, dangers of fasting, et cetera. I'm comfortable doing it, but like I said, it's not for everybody. Uh, once again, just sharing my journey. So let's get into some of the things that happen during a three-day fast. So eight to 12 hours, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to deplete your glucose or sugar and your glycogen stores, right? It'll decrease that. You're gonna have a bump in- so a quick Quick point, glycogen is essentially your body's fuel um, and, um, and, and glucose. Um, but glycogen, from what I understand, is um, essentially uh, sugar stored in your muscles so that your body can use it quickly, um, so on and so forth. So anyway, that's just energy for work, glycogen and glucose. That's the best way to look at it from what I understand. Uh, hormones called glucagon, human growth hormones, cortisol, and adrenaline. These are the things that will start to bump up your uh, glucose levels. So people don't realize that there are hormones that increase glucose in our system as we need it. And there's one hormone called insulin that brings uh, glucose down in our system. So it's really four to one, four hormones to one in terms of regulating uh, blood sugar. You will also increase ketones from fats. So a quick note on what he just talked about. Um, uh, he's saying that those four hormones, HGH, cortisol, adrenaline, and gluc glucagon, um, that they have the ability to raise the amount of glucose in your system. Um, and I think that's uh, in response to your body dealing with stress or your body just saying, hey, I need energy right now. So it mobilizes um, sugar, basically. Um, but that there's only one hormone that your body releases to bring that sugar back down. Um, which is just an important note. And then secondly, um, if you have, uh, if you're pre-diabetic or you, or diabetes runs in your family, um, definitely watch this guy's videos and try to understand what some of the potential benefits of fasting can be for you, um, before you become diabetic, et cetera. Um, if your doctor or anybody thinks anybody that you consult thinks it's healthy for you. Um, I definitely think anybody who is making sure that they don't become diabetic because it runs in their family. Um, should consider um, how to integrate some some form of fasting into your day-to-day -day life. So now he's going to talk about ketones um, from fat. And this is super important because my goal over the next seven days is to get my body into ketosis, which means from what I understand, I'm not a doctor, that I'm burning fat as an energy source. Um, the quicker I can do that, um, the quicker I'll feel more lively and have more energy and um, also be shedding weight that... Um, that's not muscle, hopefully. So as you deplete your glucose stores or glycogen stores, your body will start to use fat for fuel and it will produce something called ketones uh, to fuel your body. You also will start to experience hunger, all right? So in the next 18 to 24 hours there, you're gonna have a depletion of the glycogen stores even further, and you're gonna go through a process called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the process of producing sugar through the liver. Uh, it's basically uh, amino acid, acetate, and glycols. So you can use that uh, to fuel your body. Your body will have a natural mechanism to fuel itself. Further increase in autophagy. Autophagy is when you uh, have cellular debris, uh, things that are in your system that are kind of old and broken down. It'll start to kind of clean those things out of our system. It will also start to decrease autoimmunity because a lot of autoimmune conditions are related to food proteins. So if you have things that you're eating and it's causing inflammatory responses, the fact that you're on a fast will start to decrease that autoimmune process. It'll decrease neural inflammation. So when your body is used to using glucose, especially in the brain, uh, it can cause some inflammatory process, processes. When you switch your fuel from glucose to ketones, your brain will start to become a hybrid. So it will start to use 
ketones for fuel rather than glucose, and it will start to decrease inflammation. A quick note, um, number one, that was super important that he was talking, what he was just talking about, because I think what he just explained might be a, an important key to long-term brain health and to pre prevent Alzheimer's and things of that nature, dementia, et cetera. Um, but before that, he talked about autoimmunity. And I think just in case, um, for those of you who may be new to the term, um, uh, I won't give you, go give you, a, a, I won't give you a, a lesson autoimmunity because I'm not a doctor, but what he is essentially saying is that sometimes foods that you eat, your body can have an immune response to foods, pro certain proteins and foods that you eat, which is essentially an allergic response. Um, and you may not even notice it, or maybe you've gotten used to it. It could be discomfort, bloating, um, all types of things that you notice, but you don't realize that your body is actually activating an immune response. The same way you try to fight a cold, it's fighting against the things that you put in your body and that can create excess inflammation and a lot of problems, um, which I won't get into. Um, so I think that's an important thing to note that you can actually be eating foods that your immune system is fighting against, if that makes any sense. So um, definitely look into that more because I think it's an important point um, in addition to the other point he just made. I have a separate video on this, so I'll link that below. It will also increase hormones called brain-derived neurotrophic factors and human growth hormones. And you'll start to see ketones in your blood. So what you can do is you can buy a little um, ketone meter. Uh, you just cut, It's like a, a glucose test. You just prick your finger and you can check your level of ketones. And in the first 18 to 24 hours, you're going to see 0.5 to maybe 1 in terms of the ketone levels. Now, everyone's different in terms of how fast they can go into ketosis. If, if you're someone who's very experienced and you do intermittent fasting and you're on a ketogenic diet, you're going to get into ketosis a little bit quicker. Day two, you're going to continue to increase brain-derived neurotropic factors as well as growth hormones. You're going to increase autophagy, and this is where the real cleanup starts to occur in day two. You'll start to break down tau proteins and uh, amyloids, Lewy body, alpha synucleins, and prime glial cells, all in the brain. These are all related to things like post-traumatic stress, uh, concussions, uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia. So it starts to break down these uh, aggregates in our brain and, and it, it clears it out. There's a process called mitophagy. It'll start to uh, get rid of inefficient mitochondria in our, in our cells. Just for those of you who don't know, mitochondria, the best way to think about mitochondria um, is by thinking, that, thinking of them as the powerhouse of your cell. Um, your cells are, you know, where energy, energy is created, um, and your mitochondria are essentially the things that, um, take whatever it needs from your body to create the energy that you need when you do day-to-day -day task or exercise or whatever. Um, that's the way I understand it at least. So mitochondria produces energy, ATP, and you want mitochondria to be very efficient and produce the number of ATPs that it's supposed to and it'll start to get rid of things that are damaged and get it out of our system, okay? So when you're, you're exercising, um, for the most part, your body's using ATP. Your insulin resistance starts to come down. So people who are pre-diabetic, diabetic, your insulin resistance or the problem of um, not enough uh, glu glucose transport will start to break, right? So insulin resistance will start to uh, improve. It'll decrease. Insulin, insulin resistance, um, your body not responding to insulin, which it's releasing to try to get your uh, blood sugar to get back to a more stable place. Um, that's, from what I understand, one of the, the key issues um, with people who are pre-diabetic and eventually diabetic that they can't mod or regulate the amount of sugar in their blood. Um, so he's saying that insulin resistance, your body's essentially resisting insulin and not letting it do its work. The, um, that that goes down, which is a good thing. It'll decrease fatty liver. And the reason is because you're using fat for fuel. And part of that fat will come from the liver. So fatty liver uh, will start to break down and you can clear fatty liver if it's not too far advanced. 90 to 95% of your energy will start coming from ketones in day two. Right? instead of glucose, because you haven't eaten. 
and your hunger pains will start to actually subside in day two. For a lot of people, they go, I don't really feel hungry. I feel actually pretty good, right? So just a quick note there, I fasted for one day before, and uh, actually I fasted um, more days than that, but the point is, um, let me restart that from the beginning. So, um, that's a great point. I fasted before and um, I tell everybody and I just tell them, tell them this because this is my experience, but I didn't realize this is everybody's experience. Um, I assumed it was, but he said that on day two, um, your hunger starts to decrease. And so what I, I always tell everybody, and if anyone who's watching this video, trust me, if you can get through the first day, you can get through the second day. If you can get to the second through the second day, you can definitely get through the third day. Um, but the first day is getting through the first day and waking up the next morning, refreshing yourself and getting your water and so on and so forth and feeling like you, you've made it. That is the hardest part. So just get through the first 26 hours and uh, you got this. Day three, continued autophagy and clearance, reversal of real chronic disease. So people who have um, chronic autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue, a lot of issues with um, uh, joint pain, those types of things, will start to clear to a certain extent. It will increase your immune function, right? So your immune function will start to um, reset and improve, and there will be an improvement in overall function of the white blood cells. You'll also have increase in stem cells, right? These stem cells will differentiate into other tissues. So the stem cells will actually help you heal. Now. The goal of this three-day fast is what we call metabolic flexibility or metabolic switch. The ability for your body to use both glucose and ketones whenever it wants. So if you are someone uh, who eats every day, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times a day, what happens is you're using insulin mostly, right? Because you never let the sugar drop. Right, so you get this wild fluctuation. So you have spike in sugar, spike in insulin, drop in sugar, drop in insulin. So you get this wild swing. The purpose of a three-day fast or any type of fasting is to even out the blood sugar throughout the day. And a quick note there, those swings up and down, this is something I'm sure of, um, correlate with your emotions. Um, being short with your kids or your loved ones or someone at work, um, it can correlate with the lows when your sugar is too low and so on and so forth. But the ups and downs or the cravings of sugar, et cetera, um, are definitely linked to expressed emotions. Um, for sure. That's not, that's not like something we just made up. So, um, if any of you guys are also uh, having emotional issues, ups and downs, being short, losing your temper, et cetera, I'm not saying this is going to fix everything, but being able to get your body in, into a place where, um, it's not having these ups and downs and you're more kind of here because you're managing your sugar intake and doing things like this, uh, I do think will improve um, your mood. So if you eat, let's say, what we call one meal a day, you'll have a, a spike in, in uh, insulin and then you'll have a drop and your other hormones will kick in like glucagon, um, growth hormones, uh, adrenaline, etc. will kick in and will stabilize the blood sugar for the rest of the day. So that's what we want. We want stable blood sugar throughout the day, not this wild fluctuation. So as you do this uh, intermittent fasting or three-day fasting, there'll be a lot of health benefits. But the main point here is that it will start to stabilize blood sugar and your body will become a hybrid. Meaning when it has the sugar, it'll utilize it. If it doesn't have it and you skip a day of, of eating, then it will start to use ketones as fuels. Uh, so it'll, it, your engine becomes more of a uh, hybrid engine rather than a gasoline engine. So it's very important to do that. Now, when you break your fast, you don't want to just go ahead and, and just say, all right, I'm just going to eat whatever I want. You want to use things like maybe bone broth, uh, a vegetable soup uh, to break your fast, uh, maybe a small amount of protein. Okay. When That's an important point because the first time I fasted, the first thing I did was eat all the foods I was thinking about the whole time. I had like uh, this fish dish, dish that my, you can tell by the way, this is the end of my first day and like I'm slurring my speech a little bit because I can tell my brain is, is lacking sugar and it. I'm assuming it hasn't switched over to fat as an energy source or ketones. Um, 
But anyway, the, the th- what I did was I had like four dishes. Like I think it was oxtails, salt, saltfish. They call it. It's basically a cod, salted cod. Um, uh, a lot of Caribbean food. Cause my mom's from the Caribbean, and uh, I stuffed myself, and like the food didn't move for like a day, and I just got a bad stomachache. <laughs> and so, don't do that. Um, listen to what this guy is saying. You want to ease back into it with fluids. When you're doing the fast, you can use distilled water if you like, or you know, purified water would be best. You can use minerals and sea salt, especially on day two, maybe uh, 24 to 48 hours. You want to start to use a little bit of minerals because you might feel a little bit depleted. So you can use minerals or sea salt uh, in your water and you can drink it. And then uh, you can also use sparkling, sparkling water, but not flavored water because what can happen with flavored water, you can start to uh, increase hunger pain, uh, pains in our system. Now, for those people who can't get through a three-day fast, I'm going to show you a method of doing uh, a three-day uh, modified fast on our next video. So we'll talk about how to do it without doing strictly water uh, for the three days. All right. So these are all the benefits. This is what happens. I have multiple videos on intermittent fasting, so I'll link those below. And what you want to do is, if you ever go through it, uh, comment below. Let me know how you felt during the three-day fast and what the benefits of the three-day fast were for you. Now, when you do a three-day fast, uh, there's wide benefits. However, you have to be careful about some of those conditions that I talked about in the beginning of the video. Um, and you want to consult, uh, consult a physician before doing it. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day. So in closing, like he said, make sure um, you, uh, if you're not ready for the three day fast, or you, or you don't feel you are, or you're nervous. Um, I, I, I'd actually I think I suggest anybody who's fasting for their first time. This is solely based on my experience um, to consider. Um, uh, just a one starting with one day, right? Um, or starting with a few days of intermittent fasting, picking an eating window that you think um, can fit your lifestyle for a few days, then try one day um, and start there and see how you re- respond and make sure you consult a doctor um, or, or someone you trust that that's a physician um, of some sort um, before you do it. Because um, once again, it's not for everybody, but uh, if you are healthy enough to uh, fast, et cetera, um, I think it's a great uh, it's a great tool. So start small um, and go from there. So that's um, a quick video um, and a quick explanation of the benefits of fasting. Um, tomorrow, um, if I'm not too brain dead, uh, I'm going to run through a video that can explain to you exactly how to go about your fast, um, what to consider, what you should uh, be drinking, what you shouldn't be drinking, so on and so forth. Um, and then we'll get into the carnivore diet and a few other things.